Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Govinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm going to do a walkthrough of Arguments by Audio Thing and Heinbach. If you take a look at the pinned comment of this video, you'll find various links that I think you'll find useful and interesting. So what is Arguments? Well, basically it's an effect and it allows you to combine various signals and then do some processing on them. It can basically sound a bit like um, some sort of distortion effects. It can add texture to things, stuff like that. It's got some built-in modulation as well, but that's just on a filter. So that part is not that integral really because you could just you know use an external filter and an LFO. I think the really interesting bit about this is just the actual raw sounds that it generates before you start doing any kind of modulation. So it can sound really great and we'll have a listen to it in a second. So first I just want to explain what this is based on. So um, this is based on some, it, the manual says, analog computing based combiner and integrator of signals that was used in analog nuclear instrumentation modular racks to allow for calculations without using a computer. Okay, so sounds a bit complicated, right? But the basic point of it is that it takes two signals, A and B, and so here, for example, this input here is A and this is B. I'll let you hear those separately in a second. Now, we could also use a generator inside arguments as the B source. So we have a choice here, sidechain or generator. So we take two signals, A and B, and put them together using this little area. This is called the argument block. And then it goes through this function block, which processes it. The argument block is basically just combining the sounds in different ways. Uh, we can even not combine them. Like here, A means ju we're just hearing sound A, and B, we're just, using sound, uh, he we're just hearing sound B. Um, so yeah, it, then it goes through this function block and the manual says this creates a wide range of tones from simple boosting to high-passed industrial grit from rhythmic modulations. Now that all, all the rhythmic modulations are coming from filter modulation, which you could just do with an external filter and LFOs. Um, a multimode filter stage allows for exact shaping and modulation. Okay. So you can also, of course, just use the filter to, you know, dial in the sound. We employed analog modeling at every stage to make arguments sound not like a calculator, but like the, the rare vintage units that inspired it. So um, it looks very technical, you know, with all this stuff, but not, not really, actually. It's, it's very easy to get your head around, but it might be unpredictable in the outputs, and that's what's interesting about it. So... I'm going to actually um, switch over to another little example here. Now here I'm looking at the iPad version, uh, which is identical to the desktop version. And uh, we're going to hear it on various sources, but I'm also going to show you how to set it up for the side chaining. So if you look here, um, I have an audio channel here and I've loaded arguments just as an effect. So the way this works in AUM, I just type in here arguments, effect plugin, and I just load this, okay? And so once I do that, we'll have something like this. So this is my um, source A, okay? And I'm just using this Rhodes piano, and I'm triggering that with MIDI from this app called Mass that's absolutely brilliant. I've got a video coming out on this tomorrow, a very nice MIDI generator for iPad and iPhone. And over here, I've got this um, Slammer by Clave Grand, just percussion. That's also being triggered by mass. But you can't hear that at the moment um, because I've got this turned down, right? So I'm just going to use this to side chain this. And so to do that in AUM, what we do here is uh, press on the second channel and go to multibus audio unit instances and then choose uh, this instance here, which is one, two, okay? 
Channel One. Um, what's this called again? Uh, node Two. Okay, Channel One, Node Two. So I would just click on this, but I'm not going to do that because I've done it already. So once you've done that, you'll see the setup looks like this. The second instance will have this little number two here. And if we look at arguments UI, if I um, click out, oops, let's uh, let's look at this one. If I um, if I change from here, if I change this to B, then now we're actually hearing uh, this, so we know that everything is set up properly. But I've turned it down because I don't want the dry input. Sorry, I don't want the dry sound in the mix. So, um, yeah, so if we look at the UI here, let's take a little look at this argument section and see what these things do. Now, this is a bit technical, so I uh, pasted some stuff in here from the manual. So, uh, if we look here, a, okay, that's just the value of A. That just means that we're hearing the sound that's coming in on this first channel, right? If I change here to B, now we're just getting the sound on this second channel and we're not getting A, okay? Very simple. A and B adds the values of A and B together. So that's what this sounds like. I was basically getting some sort of distorted sound, okay? Next one. A minus B, this subtracts B from A, essentially inverting the phase of B. Okay, um, next one, B minus A. This subtracts A from B, essentially inverting the phase of A. Next one, um, the product of A and B scaled down by a factor of 10. All right, that one's not very interesting on this input. Next one, the square root of the sum of squares of A and B. Okay, next one, divides A by the absolute value of B. That sounds pretty cool. Next one, divides A scaled by 10 by the absolute value of B. Okay, so um, now the thing is, it's not all that interesting so far because there, we're just playing with the combination of the signals. But let's leave it on this one. This is the one that sounds best. Now we go down to the function part. So the function part will basically just add some more processing to the sound. Um, if we look here, uh, it's set in the init preset, it's set to X. X, no modifications applied. So when this is on X, it's not doing anything. But if we bring it down here, natural logarithm of the absolute value of X, okay, blah, blah, blah. But the important thing is, tends to compress large values and expand small ones. So we're getting compression and expansion. Next one, uh, compresses large values. Next one, adds a second harmonic simple signals but can create a lot of harmonics if the signal is complex or too loud. Now the next one usually sounds really good, listen to this. Right, this is the sort of sound I like that this app can produce. Just really punchy and a very pleasing kind of distortion. Now by the way, we could change these around, right? So at the moment, uh, this is B and this is A. But if I press here, I could swap those and it's in some of these it'll sound very different as a result of that. In some of them. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, this one here is creating a complex wave shaping effect, scaled down by a hundred. Next one, same, but not scaled down, like this is very distorted. I can just bring the output down here. 
Now I'd heavily recommend that you use a limiter with this. And I'm doing that. Okay, let's go through a few presets. So here, this is set up to use sidechain. Because we can also use the internal generator, we'll talk about that in a minute. So you're seeing the filter modulation here. Let me um, not hide the UI there. Now, let's see these generators here. So this is um, turning down the input for A, and it's using the generator here. So internally, basically, it has an oscillator, and you can choose uh, various different forms. And you have here a choice between uh, audio rate, basically, for the frequency, or LFO rates. So here, if we see this uh, frequency, uh, we go in from this up to 20 kilohertz. And if we change that to LFO, whoops, that sinks on. Uh, we're going from 0.1 kilohertz. It can go slower, basically. Up to 50 kilohertz, also go faster. So we, we can change the phase here as well. And again, you, you see here, we're just hearing the generator. It's not using this A input at all. Same with this. But this one, this is using both. And you can hear that input a little bit right in the background. So if I just change these arguments here, that will change the sound. Now look, you know, when you're going through the presets, some of them won't sound all that great because the modulation doesn't fit what you're sending in. Um, and then we have a section called processors. switch these around. I think now you'll hear the difference in this one. See? Let's just try some of these using the percussion as source A. So pretty interesting on rhythmic stuff. But again, a lot of that is coming from the filter, and I mean that is just something you could do with any external filter. Um, modulating it. Although there is one nice thing here, you have this fuzzy thing which basically just um, adds a bit of randomness into the modulation. Here we're controlling the um, modulation of the filter. We can make it negative or positive and we can control the cutoff or the resonance. This is basically um, not really much on the ambient side. It's definitely more... I could see this being very good for um, EDM and uh, maybe techno and stuff and... Anything basically where you might want real heavy sounds. Like it can be pretty brutal. 
Let's just switch these again. So you get the idea. You get the idea there. Um, whoops. Let's um, let's just hear it. Here, it just got two sine waves, and let's get rid of this. And let's just go to init. I don't see any way to get back to the init preset in this after changing to one of the factory presets. Seems like that's been left out. So let's just try the argument. So if you see here, um, we just have a sine wave at around 50 hertz. And here we've got one at around 440. And here it's just listening to A. So that was the low sine wave, and then the high one. Ah, I, I've got to bring this down. Hang on, bring this down. Okay. So we're not getting any of the unprocessed sidechain. So here we're just listening to A, the low one. Here just the high one. And here now we're doing these various combinations. And you see that can actually be quite uh, cool. But I mean, I'm sure you could approximate some of this stuff with uh, things like FM ring modulation and distortion plugins and so on, and then um, bringing in some modulation, some filters and stuff. But I don't think you'd get, you know, the same sounds. And I really do love these very, very fizzy sounds. Like that's beautiful. If you like that kind of thing, which I do. So if you remember here, we're just hearing B, but we're getting the processing from the function section. If I bring that down to X, again, we're not getting any processing. Let's try A. So we're doing processing but we're not doing any of the combining of A and B. Always make sure you pay attention to what we're using as the B source. You know, make sure if you've got sidechain set up, make sure that you've set up your DAW or your host app or whatever to have that sidechain set up. Otherwise, just use a generator. So now trying various combinations with argument. Okay, so um, that's uh, that's arguments basically, and uh, you know over here you've just got stuff like your in a amount in b amount mix and output. Yeah, uh, you've got oversampling, you've got randomize and things like that. Let's take these off. These are making a bit of noise, I think. Um, yeah, you know, you got that sort of stuff out trim here to reduce the output of the, or to adjust the output volume of the generator. And yeah, over here, the filter cutoff and resonance, which again can be modulated. So that's arguments. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was useful for you. If it was, consider smashing the like. And if you like videos on uh, plugins, especially ones that are available on iOS, but also a lot of those are available on desktop, then uh, maybe subscribe. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.